Hi guys, so I'm going to talk about the baseline workout in this video. It's quite an important element of the, the actual program. Um, it's what you should be doing on a daily basis, regardless of what your other workouts are. Uh, it can take anywhere between 5 to 20 minutes, depending on how you build up your routine. What I first suggest people doing, if you've not got a morning routine, or you've not got a certain routine that gets you active and gets you ready for the day, is that you start off with a five minute routine, then you move it up to a 10 minute routine, and then you move it into a 20 minute routine. What we're gonna do is combine um, some movement and activation exercises just to get your body ready, breathing exercises, and a little bit of mindfulness so it just prepares your body and your brain for the day ahead. And like I said, this is something that should be done on a daily basis, regardless of what your workouts are. The science is showing that we need to uh, be moving and we need to take time to incorporate mindfulness, in for our, mindfulness uh, into our routines and our lives for health. And remember, if the more relaxed you are, the more likely you are to recover from exercise and the, best, and the, the less stressed you're going to be throughout your day. Uh, so when you do exercise, it's going to be more effective. So that's what the basis of the whole baseline routine is, is about helping just set your set and focus your mind, help reduce your stress. So what I'm going to do is going to go through my routine and I'm going to do the various different elements in the way that I start. Okay, just an overview of how I work it. I'll start off with some mobility work. Uh, I'll then do a two to five minute Tai Chi, um, Qi Gong se um, movement session. I'll then do five minutes breathing and then I'll do some sort of mindfulness exercise. So Sometimes I'll meditate, sometimes I'll journal. So it just depends on um, your personal preference or all other things that you can do in there. And also, if you're not comfortable with certain aspects of mindfulness or well-being practices like journaling, meditation, um, you can just use breathing and the movement as a form of mindfulness because it'll just concentrate your mind, helps you focus uh, just on what what you're doing at the time and that allows you to clear your thoughts okay so there are different forms of meditation you've got ascension meditation is essentially where you sit on a uh, well traditionally would be sat on a cushion saying arm and focusing in and you've also got breathing meditation so just by doing breathing practices and breathing techniques that becomes a form of meditation in its own right and then you've also got movement meditation so that can be done through exercise, it could be do, done through stretching, mobility work, things like Tai Chi, uh, but also like just going out for a run or a walk could be classed as meditation. So there are different aspects that you can bring in without it being sort of bullshitty, hippie stuff, like sat on a cushion in the middle of the Thailand with loads of hippies around you, um, which is what the perception a lot of people have. The real, real, the reality of it is just literally clearing your mind, clearing your thoughts, um, and just allowing your brain time to discharge. So this is my basic mobility routine that I do uh, most mornings. Um, I won't lie to you, I don't do it every single day, but I will do it probably on average five to six times a week. Okay. So literally all I do is just start off with some head movement. And I like to work down my body, so I'll start off with my head. I'll just go from side to side. And then I'll do rotations, both directions. You can also start incorporating breathing into these as well. So you breathe out as you go down, breathe up as your throat opens, so breathe in, and let it out as you come round. Now I'll do some shoulder rotations again and start to incorporate breathing techniques into this. So I'll shrug my shoulders, so it's nice big shrugs. And then I've done three, I go the opposite direction. So the movements are a good way of actually starting to incorporate breathing techniques and just controlling your breathing. So rather than keeping your diaphragm tight and not breathing properly, you can start in the first start first phase of breathing actually in the movement. Uh, after I've done the shrugs, I'll tend to just come across my chest and again, breathe in. So 
Sometimes it'll alternate with breathing so I don't actually follow the same patterns each time. With this one I like to turn my hands over, up and over each time I move, up, move them across my body. That way it just starts warming up the uh, shoulder joints. Then from there do some hip rotations and again you can breathe in the, with these. Breathe with each rotation. I'll go ahead to some side lunges and keep my arm one arm straight so I create a right angle. So this arm will come forwards, this out to the side, turn and rotate, lift that back heel up. It just stretches and moves the whole body. And again, you want to stay away from static stretches on this. You want to do those after your workouts or later on in the day after you've done all your uh, activity. Okay then, from there, just bring your feet together and just do little circles. And again, opposite direction. And then just come up and down with the knees. So they're like mini squats. A little snake off, then just go feet, shoulder width apart, or just slightly wider than shoulder width apart. And I'll just go down, and I'll do some uh, forward bends, but. I make sure they're not static, so I'll just move along. So I'll go one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and then come up and around. With this one, let your air out on the bottom, breathe in as you go around the top. And then I go the opposite direction. So arch backwards, so it just starts warming up the spine with this. So after those, I'll just do a little shake off. Rotate the feet round, and then just stretch out. And again, rotate the feet round, and then just stretch out. And I'll generally just do 10 squats. So I'll just put my arms out, sit into the squat, back nice and straight we'll shake off and then I'll go into some dive bombers so these have got varying different names I like to call them dive bombers just do these tracksuits up so they don't fall down you don't want to see that on this video place your hands out what I do is I go into what in yoga they like to call a downward dog position. I don't, I'm not that flexible, so I never hit it correctly, but I push back and then all I do is just lower my hips down to the ground and come back up. And then from there, after I've done half a dozen, I'll then dive bomb down and back. So this warms up your shoulder joints, starts activating your core. And then I'll go into a box, stretch, so I'll arch up. So when I arch up, I breathe out. And then when I arch back, I breathe in. And then out, and in. Out, and in. Because I have a stiff lower back, I do a few mobility movements, so Get my body nice and straight like I'm doing a press up off the knees, bring my knees into the air, and I'll just rotate my heels from side to side, and then I'll just change position. So I'll then do that with a straight back, and then I'll do it arched, and then I'll also do it arched the opposite way. So I'll move around different movements on it. And that's my absolute basic mobility routine that I do every single morning. Also every morning I incorporate a two to five minute Tai Chi routine. Um, so this is a really simple routine that I learned off a Udemy course. So Udemy, if you want to have a look, up, look it up, is an online university where there's varying different courses you can pick things up uh, like tai chi courses up for like 10 20 quid which you can watch online there's also if you've got amazon prime um there's a lot of videos on there that are for free 
which give you tutorials on how to complete t uh, Tai Chi moves or Qigong moves, uh, which are really good for activating your body and creating move, good movement patterns, which open up your lungs, start activating your joints. They're also quite good for the mindfulness aspect. So if you've never meditated before or um, started or never even approached uh, mindfulness techniques, Tai Chi and uh, Qigong are really good ways of getting into it because you start to focus just on the movement and it helps clear your mind. So the movement I like to use every morning, I take my hands to start off with what's called the mountain pose. I take a deep breath in, bring my hands down in front and then you come up to the side so you step out, lifting the leg up very slowly into a horse stance. You bend your knees ever so slightly and drop your hands as if they're placed on a table. And then with this one, you do a movement, it's almost like grinding uh, corn on an old mill. So you breathe in, your hands are out in front, you breathe in and then blow out. So you rotate them around, so breathe in, blow out. And then you go the opposite direction, so you breathe in and then blow out. And then from there, bring your hands up. So I turn into a uh, side stance. So it's almost like a very s sideways, uh, short sideways lunge. You want about 70% of your weight on your back leg, about 30 on your front leg. And then from here, just bring the arms up and out. So they come up and then you do a block, block. Push one hand out and the other hand that's away from you, that's at the side of the leg that's forward, comes to the side of your hip, almost like you're patting a dog. Okay, and then you bring your hands out in front, step to the side, step to the side, come round, that's a move called floating clouds, or waving clouds even. You bring the arm round, drop forwards, putting all your weight onto your back leg with about 10% on the front leg, and then come up into the stance, step forwards, which is a block move in martial arts and karate. And then you come round to the side, step in, bring your arms above your head, nice deep breath in and down. And you can do that to both sides. So again, I'll show you from the opposite side, hands into the air, bring them down in front, up, step to the side, come up, arms into the air, bring them down onto the table. You're gonna grind, grind, then to the opposite side, and from there you bring in, back into that stance, so I've gone the opposite direction this time, so I've got my left foot forward instead of my right, I'm coming up, out to the side, block, block, push out, so in martial arts this would be a palm strike, so you're then going to come across, turn your hands, one at the belly, step, step. I've just gone the other way to make a little bit of room with this one. Arms down, then you go turn, come back up into the fan, and you come down, switching your feet and your weight from different positions. So you're creating stretching movements, but they're almost fluid and continuous, so it just starts activating the joints. So that's my basic Tai Chi routine, which literally takes about a minute each side. You can do it a bit slower if you want, you can do it a little bit faster, it's all up to you. So I'll incorporate that after the initial mobility routine. Sometimes I might do it before, it just depends on uh, um, how I feel, but generally I'll do it afterwards. Okay, so what I'm gonna show you is a very basic uh, breathing technique that you can do. Um, it's quite good to follow it with um, a short meditation or uh, just lay down and, uh, and relax sort of five minutes, not doing anything, okay? So what you need generally, a good way to do it is get a couple of books. You can also just do it with your hands as well if you've not got any books or anything around. Lay onto the ground. Wanna bring your feet up so they're creating a 90 degree angle 
feet flat on the ground, you just place your hands out to the side and then all you're going to do is take nice deep breaths in but first off just practice a little bit of bracing uh, which will then help obviously for the strength techniques. So to brace, literally push your lower back into the ground and tense your stomach so it's nice and flat. You're not trying to pull it in but you're just lowering it into the ground. So if most people will have a little bit of an arch on the back so what you're trying to do is flatten it out and just push it in. If you hold that for about 10 seconds so you take a deep breath in, so breathe in, squeeze and push that lower back it should be flat to the uh, flat to the ground and then just squeeze and tense your abdominals and then let your air out. So again breathe in So all you're doing is just holding it for around about 10 seconds. If you want to hold it for less time, uh, that's okay. You can hold it for less time. Uh, but if you want to hold it for a little bit longer, that's okay. So it's all good. Just find where your own groove is with this. We've then also got the breathing technique. So a good way to do it is get a couple of books or one book at least and just place it on your abdominals, okay? And then place the other hand on your rib cage. And all you're gonna do is you're gonna breathe. So you're breathing in and you're trying to push up your stomach so you're pushing your diaphragm down as far as you can and you're trying to raise the bulk so it's higher than your hand, okay, which is gonna be on your rib cage. And then let your air out. Pushing that spine into the ground, so breathe in. Yeah, breathe in. So your aim is to do anywhere between 15 to 30 breaths like that. So it can take sort of five minutes to get the 30 breaths out. If you're holding your breath in for a little bit longer, you might do less breaths. All's good, so it's just however you feel is most comfortable. If you start to feel lightheaded, or it starts to feel uncomfortable in any way, just go back to breathing normally. So the best thing to do is just breathe in. You can also do it with your hands. So you just put one hand on your stomach, one on your rib cage, so you breathe in. And again, breathe in. So as you're breathing through, by being on the floor, it deactivates your shoulders so you can't just lift your um, you can't create space by lifting your shoulders up and creating space you have to use your diaphragm to push down and blow your stomach up so you can actually fill your lungs up properly so what I suggest doing is around about 15 to 30 deep breaths and then afterwards just calm your breath down lay onto the side and just become aware of any feelings uh, in your body any sensations and just take a few, couple of minutes of nice calm breathing where you just laid on the floor and that's a very simple breathing technique that you can use uh, and also if you've never meditated before it's actually a form of meditation because all you're doing is focusing on the breathing and it allows you to bring uh, your breathing in line and start activating your rib cage properly so the second breathing technique you can do to help activate your lungs um, is full body breathing. So this is what a technique that's used in yoga. Uh, you also find it in some martial arts as well. Um, so all you need to do is just sit down on a chair. You can sit on the floor if you want to. I'm not very good at sitting cross-legged or not very comfortable kneeling down because of my knees. So I prefer to do it on a chair. Um, all you're gonna do is start off, just take three really nice deep breaths. So you breathe in. Filling up your lungs, pushing your stomach down, and then blow out. So keep your back nice and straight, so you breathe in, and then blow out. So you're looking to initially just start by breathing into the lower part of your body, lower part of your rib cage, pushing that stomach out, filling up those rib cage, uh, filling up the lungs fully right down to the bottom. So with this, when you've done around about five breaths, 
you can then move to the central cavity of your lungs. So the way you can check if you're doing this correctly is place your hands on your rib cage. And when you breathe in, what you're looking to do this time is expand your ribs out to the side. So you should feel your ribs expanding and your hands actually pushing out. So you're filling up the middle cavity of your lungs. You're not so much concentrating on your lower stomach, uh, lower part of your lungs and your stomach pushing out on this one. So all you do is put your hands on your ribs, back nice and straight, breathe in through the nose. So if you notice, my arms are just moving out to the side ever so subtly, I'm just holding the breath in at this point here and then blow out. And again, once you've done about five breaths, and you're concentrating on filling up the center part of your rib cage, you can move to the upper part. So just take your hands, place them about around behind the back of your neck, and then take a nice deep breath in. And then this one, you're trying to fill up the top of your rib cage. So you're nice big, nice big breath and you're trying to fill up the top of your lungs, okay? So the bottom of your, your rib cage and your diaphragm shouldn't really be moving, but you should feel the upper chest lifting up. So again, just make sure these hands are behind your head and breathe in. And relax so at the end of your fourth fifth breath just take a few nice calming breaths just breathe normally if you start to go dizzy um, at any point or you feel sick or you get any pain everything like that just stop uh, stop doing the deep breaths just go back to normal breathing sometimes if people have breathing issues or um, there's a problem with the lungs or the blood pressure um, anything along those lines it can make you go a little bit dizzy so if you that does happen just stop just sit there keep still go back to normal shallow calm breathing okay so once you've done those three breathing techniques you then try and combine them all so we start off just put your hands onto your, your knees and then you breathe in so the first one is breathing in filling up the stomach and then as you breathe in you try and pull more air in but you then bring the air into the center of your rib cage and then into the top of your rib cage so it's breathe in And you should feel the air flowing through your body and your rib cage expanding from the bottom and then expanding up at the top as you draw the air through the different cavities of your lungs. So let's breathe in. And again. And then on your last one, just take a deep breath in. And then let half your air out. You dip your head a little bit when you do this and then you just hold your breath. And when you feel the need, just let your air out. And one more deep breath in. And that's a basic full uh, body breathing uh, technique that you can use so after you've done the, the technique on the ground you can advance to this technique and and you can repeat the uh, the amount of breaths you can start as you get used to it and you start to get more uh, used to breathing deeply and feeling the benefits you can start increasing the number of breaths experiment with how long you take for a breath and how long you hold it for as well and you, what you'll do these techniques as well as calming you down uh, you'll find that your cardiovascular performance will start to improve vastly. So there's varying different studies. There are more advanced techniques of this where you use um, your hand to shut off your nostrils so you get less air in and you create, purse your lips together and create a vacuum. Uh, but basically just start off with these basic two techniques and if you do them for a few weeks what you'll find is that your overall uh, strength energy levels will start to increase. And you'll notice, particularly if you do go out and do a run or a bike ride or anything like that, you'll probably find that your lungs 
will be active and ready straight away. So from there, after I've done breathing techniques, I will generally then move on to a form of mindfulness. Okay, there's a big focus on the minute on uh, things like mindfulness and well-being, particularly in the corporate world um, and for people who have a lot of stress in their lives. The combination of quite a, stressful, a society being quite stressful in general, but then on top of it, the digital age means that we get information thrown at us constantly on a daily basis. It's like a barrage of information. It's hard to switch off. So in recent years, there's been a lot of focus on mindfulness and well-being practices. Now, if you've never done anything like this or um, gone into it, the whole thing of mindfulness can be overwhelming in its own right. But the three things that I found that work for me, and they generally work, one of them will work for most people at least, okay? So one of the things I do um, is go for a walk in the morning so because I've got a dog it makes it easier because I have to go out and walk him um, and my dog is very reactive so it's better to take him out in the morning quite early before all the dog walkers and people are around what I found this is actually very good form of um, mindfulness and well-being it allows you to just focus on your environment it's very quiet at half five in the morning and you can hear um, the sound of nature, you can hear the wind blowing through the trees, um, the air is un relatively unpolluted because people haven't started driving around so you can start to smell things and it becomes quite a nice little environment to walk around. So what it allows you to do is just focus your mind, uh, the activity, the, the, the actual um, uh, process of walking starts getting your body active and actually helps you just uh, focus in and go on the day. So even if you don't do any mobility work or um, you didn't do any breathing techniques and all you did is go out every morning for a 10 minute walk around the block before everybody else is awake, you'll probably find that your overall health and fitness would improve um, just from doing that. So I recommend everybody go out and you just get the early morning rays from the sun. It's obviously not as you don't get them if you're going out in the winter, but in the summer, you can get the early morning rays, which are very good for you, um, and they actually help uh, stimulate certain hormone responses and actually get things activated and get your brain working properly. So it's a very good, very simple thing to do. If you're stuck for any type of mindfulness or you think, oh, I don't like this, you know, this sort of thing, it's a load of bollocks, it's for, for hippie women or um, sort of like weird guys called river with beards, which is generally what happens when you start going down the Tai Chi route. Um, the other thing I do is journaling. So the old fashioned thing of people who used to write diaries on a daily basis and journals on a daily basis uh, is starting to sort of make a reoccurrence. Why? Because it allows you to get your thoughts out onto paper. Once you get your thoughts out onto paper, it stops them messing around with your own head. So as men, uh, we are generally emotionally retarded and we don't like to talk about our feelings and we act all bravado and um, we'll hold things in or we'll pretend we can cope with things when uh, it's not good. Uh, and sometimes we just need to get that information out. So just good thing to do is get a little journal like this and then you can fill it with various things. I actually use something called a focus wheel, which I learned from... Um, Jesse Elder, which is a life coach guy who's online. Some of his stuff's quite good if you want to do it. What I do is, I don't know if you'll see that there, but with this light, I write down um, something that I want to focus on and then you draw a wheel or a circle around it and then you split the circle into eight parts and then you write something positive about that aspect or that focus and it helps you focus and focus on things in a good way and then also, if I'm struggling for things to write, I'll just write down a list of things that I'm appreciative or thankful for. Um, and then also, sometimes I just write down how I'm feeling, um, <clears throat> write down things that uh, are important to me or maybe weighing on my mind. Sometimes I might write down ideas. So if I'm stuck for ideas, for example, for writing a blog, 
I write down 10 things that I could write a blog about and then I'll normally get inspiration from it. So you can use your journal for varying different things. You could use it for planning your day. You could use it for uh, just decoding your day if you wrote it, if you did your journaling late at night before you went to bed. So it's a very good aspect. And literally what I do is I put a time limit of five minutes. Um, so I have to do a minimum of five minutes uh, sometimes it'll be a bit longer, but I set a time limit for it. When you set a time limit for it, if you've got nothing to write, you you can it makes you think a little bit more and it starts just getting your brain active when you've got a time limit to complete it to. Okay, so the third mindfulness practice that I do is meditation. Uh, and this is probably the most beneficial uh, for me, but it's probably also the hardest thing to learn how to do. It's a very simple concept, is that you basically lay down or sit down and you just basically um, let your brain do nothing. However, for a lot of people, particularly if you're stressed or um, you've got a very active mind, um, it's not that easy just to sit down and let your brain do nothing. So the thing that I found that works really well for me is using binaural beats, uh, in particular alpha waves. So your brain operates at different wavelengths uh, you have alpha waves, beta waves, theta waves, uh, delta waves, and they all have a different effect on the brain. But for meditation purposes, look for alpha waves, okay? What it does, it sends, uh, when you get an alpha wave track, you put your headphones in, you get an alternating signal in each ear, which basically helps your brain uh, focus and, and start operating at a certain wavelength. When you hit a certain good alpha wave meditation, your whole body just starts to hum. Uh, your brain becomes very relaxed. Sometimes you might find that you fall asleep when you do it. Other times you might find that you just go into a very sort of zoned, zoned out sort of trance state. Um, and what you're looking for is to try and get to those sort of zoned out trance states. But even if you don't reach those uh, sort of really relaxed states, it's still good to just keep doing it regardless of uh, whether you hit them or not, it's the process of just letting your brain relax uh, is still beneficial, even if you don't hit what, what people call like a good meditation or getting in the zone. Just sitting there and, and letting your brain or giving you a chance for your brain to relax is still beneficial. So uh, if you need to get some alpha wave tracks, there's a guy called Jeff, uh, Dr. Jeffrey Thompson. Uh, his tracks are available for free. Uh, on Amazon Music if, you, if you've got access to that. Um, if you don't have access to that, you can also get Alpha Wave tracks on YouTube. So all you need to do is just basically um, Google 10 minute Alpha Wave meditation, five minute Alpha Wave meditation, 20 minute Alpha Wave meditation, it's up to you. If you're not used to meditating, start off with five minutes, then look at doing 10 minutes, then look at doing uh, working up to 20 minutes. It seems to be 20 minutes is the optimum amount of time. Um, what I tend to try and do is a minimum of five minutes on a daily basis. And sometimes I'll do that when I'm breathing. So because I've learned how to meditate now, I can sometimes do my meditation while I'm doing my breathing practices. So what you need to do is just find your own groove, experiment with it, find, find a track that you like or one that starts to work for you. Uh, and then just stick with it for a few weeks and then what you'll find is that you'll get into the habit of meditating regularly and the days that you don't meditate you'll notice that you're a little bit more stressed a little bit more anxious or don't feel as uh, capable so it's always good uh, sometimes to have a day off so you actually see uh, the benefits of it when you do miss it or when you do do it um, the key thing with meditation, a lot of people struggle thinking they have to completely switch the brains down. Uh, and that's quite hard, particularly in our stressful society when we have a lot of stuff going on. Um, the aim, what you should do when you're meditating is that you're not trying to just completely go into some sort of zone. All you're doing is ignoring the thoughts in your brain for a little bit. So if you do get a thought when you're meditating, don't uh, dwell on it. Just acknowledge the thought so if for example a thought about work comes up or thought about family life comes up don't worry about um those thinking about it just acknowledge the thought make yourself aware of it uh, and then let it pass over you so the best description i ever sort of got given to me was imagine you sort of lay down 
like you did when you was a kid on the uh, garden lawn, looking up at the sky and watching the clouds go past. So as the clouds go past, they change form. And those different forms, initially when you first come across, you see a cloud, oh, that cloud looks like a car, that no, looks like an elephant, oh, it's gone. So imagine your thoughts when you're meditating are like clouds, they come up to you, you acknowledge them, uh, you recognize what they are, you just let them float past you, okay? And sometimes those thoughts will morph into different thoughts. That's fine. So when you're meditating, it isn't about hitting some sort of zen-like state. Occasionally you will, you will go into, some, you will go into a zone uh, and you'll feel some real strong benefits from it. Sometimes it's literally just letting thoughts pass over your brain. Um, even if it just feels like you're laying down for five minutes, that's still a form of meditation. Okay, so if you have any questions on the, any of the mindfulness techniques that I've just gone over, uh, <clears throat> let me know, drop, drop, a, drop them into the Facebook group um, and then we can discuss them from there. Just to recap on the baseline routine, what you're looking to do is find something that physical that activates your body. Um, Okay, so what we're looking to do on the baseline routine is you're looking for something physical to activate your body. So that could be stretching, could be a mobility workout, it could be going for a walk, it could be going even for a little jog if you wanted to. Uh, and then we're looking at incorporating breathing techniques just to help open up the lungs and get the rib cage and the diaphragm working properly. Also to start energizing yourself. And then we're looking at mindfulness techniques. So you can incorporate these into your physical activity if you, if you want to, or you can do them completely separate uh, in forms of journaling or meditation. So what we need you to do is basically look and try and find your own little routine. What works for me might not work for you. Um, you can try my routine if you want. If you, for some people it might be too much, for some people it might be too little. But what you're looking at doing is just finding a routine that works for you. So look, look at creating a routine that lasts at least a minimum of uh, 10 minutes, okay? Uh, and then from there you can just build it up to um, a 20 minute routine or a 30 minute routine. You can also have routines from when you're busy. Um, so there's days when I just think, right, this, this is my minimum routine. It'll literally be doing some mobility work and a little bit of breathing and then I've got to go out the house. Uh, other days it might be, right, it's quiet, the kids are still in bed, the wife's still in bed, the dog has been walked already, I'm going to do a 30 minute um, routine. So it will vary around uh, you, your lifestyle, um, basically from day to day.